was the origin, that was the original meaning. And even if you look through the New Testament and you see how the people viewed Jesus at his time, none of them worshipped him. None of them worshipped him. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of naysayers. In the, in no, the not, none of the people that he preached to worshipped him or thought of him as God. They always thought of him as the Messiah or prophet or a son of David, right? And son of man or the son of God. No, and there was no understanding whatsoever that he was God himself. This is a later understanding. What you have adopted is a, is a, is a later understanding. Whereas for us in our tradition, we say, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, he was um, but a messenger. Many messengers came before him, all right? He, and um, we believe in the virgin birth. We believe that he did miracles, right? Uh, but we do not believe he was ever crucified. And, and you know, if you, we have evidences for that, we can get into it. But we don't believe that um, he was ever crucified. We believe he's the Messiah. Why, why, why does not Muhammad believe? Because I, I, I've seen that Muhammad, I think I've seen Muhammad himself said in, in the scripture, Jesus wasn't crucified. He doesn't believe that Jesus did the No, so Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the author of the Quran. No, I know that. Yeah. I know that. What I'm, what I'm saying is it not in the hadiths? I might be completely wrong. Yeah, no, that's fine. Is it not in the hadiths that Muhammad himself says? I do not believe that Jesus was crucified. Something along those lines. No, no? he doesn't. It, it, not in, not in that way. But he mentions about the the return of uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh -huh. And he mentions that the son of Mary will descend on the eastern side of Damascus, on the on his hands on two angels. His hair will be wet, you know, or right. seemingly wet. He will have a a, a saffron like uh, gown, you know, uh, sort of dress on. You know, not dress, but you know, like um, attire. You know, he'll have a saffron-like attire, uh, wearing his hands will be on the wings of the two of two angels, and we'll we'll be witness to all of this. So that will be the de facto sign that that is the Messiah, you know, right. returning, which is different to the eschatology of the Bible. I understand, but this is our this is our our faith, and um, but that is that is an offshoot because the core message is. As it is said in the Bible, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. That's the that's the Hebrew for Hear, O Israel. Uh, your Lord, your God, your Lord is one. Right. So I'm sure they taught you this. Uh, I don't spend that much. I don't go to the church anywhere near. No, but that should see so the thing is, and this is what I'm saying to you. The core message is who God is. Okay. So even if it's even if you haven't gone to church or anything, the people who have invited you to the faith, that should be the number one thing. But it's not. The number one thing that they call you to is love, peace, yes. the you know that's the crucifixion. Fine, but that's not that's not devoid in Islam, right? I, I respectfully, I don't. That's fine. I've seen, I don't believe that's true. That's fine. I've read like parts of the Quran, like that's fine. Surah nine, nine twenty nine, nine, nine yeah, verse yeah. five. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Well, for me, so, but there's, like, but there's, I would say like the majority of Muslims yeah. are cool, right? But. As for the, from what I've seen in the scripture itself, and you can make, you can definitely make the same criticism. Yeah, don't need it. It's okay now, Hamza. You can definitely make the same criticism of the Old Testament, right? But the problem I have with that is that Christianity oh, went through that reform, right? No, New so Testament as well. Testament. It's in the New Testament. Yeah, as well. no, there's, there's also a couple of things in the New Testament yeah. that you know but, you should be. But it's contextualized, right? Yes, it's contextualized. But my problem is, is so it's it's the same in the Quran. My my problem is is this. And mm. um, once again, I, I think you're probably an alright guy. And, the same with God, so maybe. The maybe, maybe not. <laughs> no, maybe. I don't, obviously, I don't know you like that. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but my, what I'm saying is, there are clearly X amount of Muslims in the world, and you could probably make the same case for any one of any. Religion. What terrorists? Yeah. Terrorists. Yeah. yeah so I agree. But and, and what they say is like every time they do something, it's Allah what So why why did they say my God is greater than yours every time they do something? No, we don't say greater. We say he's the greatest. Okay, so, yeah. so that's what Allah. That's what it means. Allah so, means Allah is the greatest. Why? Why is it when these guys go and do something bad, they look, always quote any, the verse from the Quran or the Hadith? Look, people can. People have done this throughout yes. throughout the centuries, right? Cite religious texts that doesn't support them to claim that it supports them. Right. Happened but in the, it happened in the Crusades. It happened with the Islamic certain Islamic organizations. All right, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, but it doesn't mean that's what the teaching is. Does it? So what what is what, you what would you say is like the um, the the tenets like the main tenets of Islamic teachings? Like the, what, what so is to it, believe what is to it believe in one God, for a person? yeah, no, to believe in one God, right? To believe in his uh, prophets, to believe in the scriptures, to believe in the angels, to believe in predestination, whether it was good or bad, and to believe in the divine. Uh, sorry, and to believe in um, you know he heaven and hell, the the, the last day. 
Um, That's the six articles of faith that are key to every every Muslim. Um, and in a practical sense, what does that look like? Like in a real world. In a real world, so not. that look like? So how does a, how does a devout Muslim conduct himself? By treating uh, by treating his uh, brother how he treat uh, how he'd like to be treated. Is that regardless of what regardless of faith? Okay. Right. So a lot. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in his sermon, in his last sermon, uh, that an Arab is not superior to a non-Arab, and a non-Arab is not superior to a, uh, an Arab. Right. Yeah. Black man is not superior to a white man. A white man is not superior to a black man. But the superiority comes in what piety. So those who are Sorry, more piety, more righteous. Okay. Those who are more righteous, who stand with God, those are the ones who excel. Right, or are better than others, but that's in the eyes of God. We don't go around and say, oh, "I'm better than you," because I'm, you know, uh, I, I I believe in God better, you know, better than you do. No, this is for God to judge, right? But for us, we treat one another with kindness and humility. In the Quran, in chapter six, verse eight, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Allah does not forbid you from dealing kindly and justly with those who do not throw you out of your homes." And of course, there's a historical context to that, as the Muslims, like the early Christians, were persecuted for simply, for simply. <laughs> I'm being positioned for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <That's all new. laughs> so um, you know, you know the um, so there's a context. Allah does not forbid us from dealing kindly and justly. And even if we talk about um, the con the context of war, like you said, chapter uh, nine, nine, verse five, nine twenty nine yeah, yeah. and stuff, yeah. there is a specific context to that. And this is with regards to people who have enmity with us. So what is so since I mentioned it, what's yeah. the context of within which nine twenty nine? So 929 is actually in the context of a battle that never took place, right? But it mentions that, you know, when people come to attack you, to fight you, to kill you, yes, you retaliate, right? You retaliate and you defend yourselves, you fight them back. And you have no mercy upon them when you're fighting them. But what people tend to not add on is in chapter 2, verse 190 to 192, it mentions the same thing. Fight them until there's no corruption. But if they stop fighting you, then you stop, right? So when hostility ceases, you should be quick to cease the hostility as well. And then it, and then, and it finishes off by saying, and Allah, and Allah is forgiving, right? So, so we, could, you know, we could talk about the wrath of Allah, but when it talks about the ceasing of hostility, Allah mentions his attribute of forgiveness, right? So I would advise you to read the Quran in its entirety. I'm definitely, I'm Good. I am... Um, if you'll give me a Quran, I don't know if that's a thing. I'm no, no, no. We usually we do have a Quran. Can we? Can we get a Quran, inshallah, for him? Um, that's just, is that to, do I bring it back? Or? No, no, no. That's for you to keep. That's okay. for you to keep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, can, 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 some, can someone bring one for him, inshallah? Thank so, you. Thank yeah. You that's okay. That's not a problem. Yeah. At the end of the day, the, like we said, Islam is for for all of mankind. It is not for the Arabs, you so, know, particularly or anyone. Yeah. I like, like I said, Christianity in its inception. Judaism and in its inception with Moses and with Jesus, yeah. it was it, it was for the history, no yeah, but it was for the children yeah, yeah. of Israel and it was yeah, never yeah. to be preached to be otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Islam at its inception it was for all of mankind, <laughs> right? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, uh, regarding the Prophet peace be upon him, indeed we have sent you as a mercy to to to, man, to to the worlds, right? Not even mankind to the worlds. And the angel <clears throat> and the thing is, it's interesting because there is a narration where the with the angel Gabriel he came, you know, he was with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked the angel Gabriel, who said, he read this verse. The, when the verse was revealed, he asked the angel Gabriel, he said, has my mercy reached you? And the angel Gabriel said, yes, because until today, I did not know my status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And of course, we know that the angel is the, the, the supreme angel, right? He is the, the highest of the uh, archangels, even. Yeah. But for, for the angel of Gabriel, it was the revelation of the Qur'an that gave him that, that peace with regards to his station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how the mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi you know, transferred to the angel Gabriel. So it's not even about mankind. It's for all the worlds. This is the, this is the power of the message of Islam. This is the power of the Qur'an that has come to the, uh, to the world. All right, so it's specifically for you. And when you read it, inshallah, you will see that how it speaks to you as an individual, as well as speaking to all of humanity. And the Quran is a guide. It is not a storybook. All right. It doesn't go through, you know, it mentions some of the stories of the prophets, but in order to teach us a lesson, to, to give us guidance to be better. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions about those who go astray, who choose to go astray and gives them the warning. There is a balance here. 
that those who do righteous, they, they will attain good in this world and in the hereafter. And those who attain, uh, those who do bad deeds, they will attain a, a foul destiny in the hereafter, right? Namely hellfire. But at the end of the day, it's our choice, how we conduct ourselves. So when, we, so when you mentioned that the, most of the Muslims are, are good and good people, it's the Qur'an. It's the message of Islam yeah. that makes, us, that makes so us this way. Here's what confuses me is sure. how people talk about Prophet Muhammad when he was in the Latin period and then when he was in the... Uh, Medina. 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 Yeah. There seems to be a quite a profound difference between how we conduct themselves, how we preach his teachings. No. So, why, from, my, from the yeah, way yeah, I sure. can see it, yeah. it seemed like he was a more peaceful person and he was preaching a more positive message in the Meccan period than when he was in the Medina period. So there are, we know, we know which one, which surahs are the Meccan and which ones are the uh, Medinian, Medinian surahs. But the, if you look at the Quran, you won't actually see a shift, right, in that. How uh, the Prophet ﷺ conducted himself was the same way, even in Medina. Yes, he engaged in warfare and battle, he was a statesman, he was a leader, he was a military man, but, and he wasn't that in Mecca. But even in Mecca, when, when, the, when the companions were being persecuted and everything, he would give them prophecies of, of military conquests. He said, you, while they're being persecuted and, and killed, yeah, that's for you, no problem. Uh, while they were being persecuted and killed, the Prophet said to them... Does this have sure. the hadiths in it as well? Or no, no, no. That, that's the hadith is okay. separate. Um, you can come at any time and ask us questions and everything. Many of us have channels where you can come, you know, and contacts where you can email us and stuff. I'll give you my contacts if you need. Um, so, yeah, he was telling them about monetary conquest. He said, you will come to Constantinople, which happened. We know it happened. Um, but this is at a time where they were persecuted. So when we're talking about the Prophet ﷺ and how he changed in regards to how he dealt with people, no. Because the prophecy in itself, saying about his congregation, his people, the Muslims conquering other people, engaging in warfare. That's a lot of mics I know. I'm already weighed down with the water. Now yeah, they've got the mic. Now they've got the mics on. So, um, yeah. So, and, and even when you see the Prophet ﷺ outside of war, in, you know, during... <laughs> During battle, yeah, he was a, he was a lion, fierce. The, the companions would hide behind him. You know, if they, if they if they were wa you know wavering in their courage, they would fight behind him, and he would go forth. Is that is this is this? I know there's like three separate definitions for jihad. Is this like is this what you define as jihad? Yeah, this is also jihad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? So jihad jihad fi sabilillah comes in many many forms. Yes, yeah. as you mentioned. So it's like the inner war. Yeah, the inner, inner struggle. Then, war, then you've got defensive jihad yeah, and yeah. offensive jihad. No. Um, so, you know, in, in battle, he was, he was like that. But outside of battle, he was, he was the best man you could, you know, even in warfare, he conducted himself, himself in a perfect way. But outside of, um, outside of the battlefield, he, he was just like he was in, in Mecca, even more gracious, right? Um, the Prophet Sallallahu you know, there's uh, many stories, for example, the Jewish woman, she, every time he would walk past her, she'd throw rubbish at him, Rot rotten stuff, she'd throw, and then one day he walked past her house and she didn't throw rubbish at him. Do you know what he did? He went in to check on her to see if she was okay. So, I mean, normally, if it was me, uh, walking past someone constantly, I'll be thankful. Oh, freaking, uh, you know, at least I get a day break. No, he went in to check on her. It's a Jewish woman who absolutely hates him, throwing rotten food at him. And he goes in to check on her. So, yeah? the reason, so this is why I'm kind of bought the difference between him and the mm. American period and the Medina. Mm. No, this is in the Medina. Um, this is in the Medina. Oh, in the Medina yeah, because the Jews are situated in so, Medina. All right, fair enough. Yeah, um, my bad. Uh, no, but, that's okay. So, see, in some ways, it seems like he's a decent guy, right? But then, and I hate to bring this up because I know you probably get it a lot. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry. About, don't worry. The stuff with Aisha. Yeah, him, that's one. Her being six, six yeah. and then nine, nine. Really, yeah. you know. And I, I get that people make the argument that. Obviously, it's a different time and back then, blah, 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 this and that. See, I, I won't make but, that argument to you. Yeah, so, see, for me, the same way that we as a people, we've always understood the difference between man and woman. How is it that Muhammad, he seems like he was historically a pretty smart guy. How is it, though, he didn't understand that there was a difference between a child and an adult? He did not. But then, see, this is the problem I have, though, is that she was still playing with toys, narrated by herself, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, she, and all the other girls, would, they would like disappear as soon as he appeared and then he would yeah. do what he wants to. But how, and I understand that like, for Muslims, Muhammad is the, uh, like, the pinnacle the, the example. You should, yeah. you, should, uh, you should aspire to 
uh, what's the word? To be like him, yeah, to emulate him. him. Like That's him, it. Well, right? yeah. Does that not mean that you're also implying that what he did to the video? How I define it. No, that's fine if you define does it that, that way. So have an does, that not, does that not mean you're implying that what he did is acceptable? Yes, not implying. We're telling, we're saying yes, that's acceptable. Not only acceptable, we we have no issues with in, it. In any, in all ages. No, see the the, the the thing is we have. Because this is what this is what. No, I no, no. Is there, even 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 his even his marriage. Okay, Let, you you mentioned pedophilia. Let's define yeah. pedophilia. Pedophilia is a sexual attraction to prepubescent children, correct? Yeah, that's, that's how it's that's defined. What would have been, isn't it? Right. Was there a sexual attraction to her? He had sex with her, didn't he? No, no, no. She was, six year, she was six years old. Did he have a sexual attraction to her? Uh, I can't say when she was six, he had a sexual attraction to her. Right, so he didn't. He only married her, but at nine, he did have sex with Okay. Her. At nine years old, she's a woman, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, okay? But we'll look at the definition, and then we'll look at the reality. Now, the reality is, he didn't even. He wasn't even interested in her. Why did he marry her then? I, I couldn't. Remember. Allah told him to. All right. Oh, so, yeah, he brought yeah. her down with the, that bird, isn't it? The, the cloth or something like that. Like, I read this yesterday or something. Very recently. No, I'm not. I'm not too certain. He saw that Allah doing. sent her down like she was in some kind of. Oh, the the dream. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 And so said, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. then he went to Abu Bakr. Yeah, yeah. And Abu Bakr was hesitant. Yeah, Radhi Allah Anhu. He was hesitant of giving his daughter to the Prophet Muhammad. But was it was the was the reason her age? It wasn't her age because she was already someone else has already proposed to her before. Yeah. Right. So she was. Um, it wasn't her age. It was because it was awkward between two best friends. That was his reason as to why he was hesitant. They were so close that he was like, "But you're my brother. That's how I see you. You know, I can't give you my daughter because you're my brother." So that was that was the hesitance. And uh, what do you call it? And uh, Rasulullah so Islam corrected him. He was like, look, oh, yes, we're brothers in Islam, but she's lawful to me. So, uh, you know, and at the end of the day, so then the marriage in of itself happened uh, due to revelation. It wasn't due to any pedophilic trope, right? And, 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 a, and, a, and a pedophile, he will exercise his lust on a prepubescent pre 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 child. What did he do, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He waited three years until she attained womanhood. Now, how do, why do we say attained womanhood? It's because she passed, she yeah, she passed blood. Yeah, yeah she passed blood. So she became a woman, all right? So when that happened, then he consummated the marriage. So what does that do for us as Muslims today in this, in this setting? A couple of things. We, yes, Muslims mention about the time, which means we have to take into consideration culture. So, you know, the time that we live, the times that we live in. That's, the, that's one thing. The second thing is we, we ensure that we determine um, that she is a woman, that she's able to. Okay, so uh, can I ask you this? How, do you, how would you define a woman? How do we define yeah, like a woman? What is the criteria of a woman? Right. A woman is, is a woman who has passed blood, right? That's no, what, but it's got to be more than that. Like, no, that's the, the, that's the defining uh, transition for a woman between being a child and being an adult. Right. See, for us as Muslims, we don't have the the concept of teenager, adolescence. Okay, so here's what I you know, say a woman is. and obviously I'm a West. I've been born and raised here in London. I'm a Western guy. I'm I a I was born and raised here yeah, as well, but so I don't buy into. The, I, I don't buy into this. I and I think the majority of them, yeah, regardless of their religion, will, will, will decide will uh, believe what a woman is. Okay. It's an adult human female. What, okay, what, what makes her an adult human female? She's past puberty. She's past puberty. She's right. Gone through puberty. She's, she's gone through right. the stage of puberty. She's exactly. So, the, um, but that's exactly what I said. She and passed blood. If you're going to go by law, obviously we'll say it's 18 and over. No, but the thing is, right. so we say past blood, right, or puberty. Okay. Now there are some women that don't pass blood. Okay, but they're still considered women because they still go through puberty. They just don't pass blood, right? Amenorrhea is the condition. Now, f that's, the, that's the criteria for us, right? So the, we have to take into, into consideration the culture. We have to c take into consideration the fact that the, that the woman is a woman, right? And she's not a child. We have to c take into consideration her mental ability, right? So she has to be able to consent as well, which Aisha radiallahu anha, she was able to do. Now for us, standing here today, thinking about a six-year-old consenting, is, it's hard for us to understand. Yeah, I get I, that. I've never accepted that. Okay, I get that. But that's the history, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the history. So we, we learn that a woman has to be able to give consent. Okay? Um, and that she's able to fulfill her duties. Okay? Uh, as, as, a, as a wife. Okay? So this is the other 
this is, uh, so these are the factors that we have to take into consideration when we are approaching a woman for marriage, right? Now, in like you know, in some in some uh, Arab uh, countries, we still betroth our daughters yes. at a young age, right? But we ensure that they part of puberty and that they consent to the marriage. Forcing a woman to, to get married is prohibited in Islam, okay? Despite some cultures doing it, we, we fight yeah. against it. I'm aware of the problems that Muslims have. Can I ask you where you're from, by the way? Yemen. Like, Yemen. Oh, Yemen. Yeah. And are you Sunni or Shia? That... I'm Sunni. You're Alhamdulillah, Sunni. yeah. Don't worry about the Shia. <laughs> what, is, what, is there a big difference? Massive difference, okay. right? So, um, the, the Sunni position is, the, is, is evidence. Right, this is why I'm a Sunni, because I can evidence it from the Quran and the Sunnah and, and you know, all our texts, right, and the tradition and everything. So when it comes to the Prophet, the, the Prophet when, we, when we break it down like this, we show that there was nothing immoral about what the Prophet did. At the, time, at the time he was living in, the culture had this, where women, girls as young as that, would get married, okay? But he showed, he, he, up the, he you know, he set the standard. I, uh, well, I, was, I came here to see him as well. Yeah, yeah. We, um, so yeah, he gave us the example of how to conduct ourselves when approaching marriage. Not to, it was not to say that because he's the example for us, that means we've got to go around finding six-year-olds. That's not what it means, right? In fact, marrying a six-year-old is one of the things that is not a sunnah for us. So it is not a tradition for us. Iraq, Greece, I, um, you probably all know this. Um, mm. I saw this a few weeks ago, their parliamentary system, or whatever, their government system, mm -hmm. they were going through, they were attempting to implement... The Sharia? Uh, no, no, so they wanted to lower the age limit. For yeah, that's fine. Little girls yeah, that's fine. From whatever it was down to, I think it was nine. I don't think it was as low as nine. Uh, from, what I saw, from what I understand, it was nine. I, I, was I, I, I've not seen, I've not seen as low as nine. So but regardless, is that justified? regardless, if, if no, see, it, based on the thing is, for, for, based on no, your, for your me, scripture. for me, yeah, exactly. It's got to be based on the evidence of the scriptures and the uh, uh, and the tradition. Yeah. Islam does not have an age of consent, right? It doesn't have an age of consent because, for example, I could let's take the nine-year-old example. For example, if, if Iraq is in the that, if, if it's a nine-year-old girl, through, yeah, okay. But well, even if, let's say it goes through. Yeah, yeah. If there is a nine-year-old who consents, who is able to consent, who is um, uh, who's, uh, who's past the age of puberty, who can who can fulfill her duties in, in the marriage, and it's society and the and the society and the culture accepts it, then by all means go for it. But why is there no uh, age of consent in Islam? Because we could have a 25-year-old girl, beautiful, you know, um, she, uh, what do you call it? She's passed her menses and everything, but she has. A, a, you know, a mental illness. Yeah. Does that qualify her for marriage? No. No, because you wouldn't be able to say that she's able to give. Exactly. Um, but this is, so, what, this is what I was going to say. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. Mind me That's what I thought. This is what I was going to say. We have to go at this, I guess, from a more scientific point of view. So what science would say a six-year-old and a nine-year-old are not able to give consent because their brain hasn't fully developed in a way that today, them today, yeah, to I agree. Moral, uh, moral decisions. Today, yes, I and agree. Marriage is a highly moral decision. I agree. Engaging in sex, especially for the first time, even for me, that's a highly moral decision. Uh, look, I don't. And science has said it's not done from day one. I, so, but notice what I said. If they can, if they have the mental ability. Right to consent to fulfill their duties. That's the only time they they will be. If that doesn't, if that's not fulfilled, we cannot marry them. But what I'm what I'm implying is that I should wouldn't have had the ability to. Fulfill. No, but you're taking 21st century um, studies and imposing it on the on the seventh century. The okay, seventh so century. How, how do we know then that Aisha herself was able mentally, mentally, physically, you can make the case. She's the one. She's the one that's. She's the. One. You make the case that she really can. Because science says we've been like this from day one in terms of our mental development. No, but that's not that's not true. So then I did I say how did she develop differently? No, Aisha Radiallahu she was like many, many most of the women at her time, at a very young age. I can even prove it to you today, right? When we look at war-torn countries or yeah. countries that have extreme poverty, you see little children, you know, as young as six, seven, eight. They're doing the they're doing the, the the work of adults. Why? Because they in order for to survive, 
they are forced to mature mentally, yes. right? The, 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 the environment around them forces them to, to mature quicker than, than, a, than a girl would in, in the UK, living a comfortable life. Likewise, in the, in the 7th century, you have the desert, you know, you know it's, it's always survival. So you're forced to mature. So Aisha, that's one, that's one perspective, right? But we know in the history that in the Arabian Peninsula, the girls were able to consent at that time. It was a norm. Right for girls to be married at married, uh, that time. Um, so that, so like I said, to question the his, the history here it doesn't really make sense because it's well documented. In fact, what has happened in the Arabian Peninsula, particularly in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu is more documented than any any other time in history, with relation to a, an individual and a community. So. There is no questions about that. Yes, there are people that try to cast doubt on that and go down the Orientalist route, but we have arguments to you know, prove that they are wrong in their assessments. But going back to the, you know, uh, the whole idea of uh, paedophilia as well, what, do, what are the mental and, you know, what's the mental trauma and the physical trauma that one would get from that? We know what, what uh, girls go through mentally when they are abused in that way at a young age. You don't see any of those, you don't see any of that in, in Aisha radiallahu In fact, she grew not only to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but to, and to defend him, but she was a scholar, she propagated his religion, right? This is, all of these things are, con are the complete polar opposite of what you would expect. Yeah, no, I so, you know, so I, I I'm understand. Not, I'm not saying she can't grow to love who he was, but... Yeah, we can talk about that. We can talk about child. It was wrong for Muhammad to engage in No, but he didn't. That's and the thing. When she was a he, he don't have to When she was a woman, he did. He he he, he consummated when she became a woman. So I just want no. to ask. So when uh, you say she became a woman, is it when puberty starts, kind of thing, or is it? No, when she was at. Uh, well, no, when she met. As soon as that her happens. menses, yeah. When the menses. So for for us, the the sign of puberty of someone hitting puberty and and reaching the age of accountability. Yeah. It's a physical sign. For the women, it's passing blood. And for the men, it's their first wet, wet dream, right? So for, for me, I'm not going to say for me when, <laughs> it's cameras. But for, for, for any Muslim uh, man, as soon as he has, he has his first wet dream, he's accountable by, by Allah. At that point, Allah has decided that you are capable of making decisions, moral decisions. So that is, that is the marker of when a man and a woman can engage in intimacy, can get married so and engage in intimacy. So you don't, like, the way we view it in, like, Western civilization yeah. would be teenager and that whole period yeah. is you becoming, you say For as, us as that happens. You're an adult. You were, I, okay, yeah. okay yeah. so my question after what he just said mm. is, how do you decide that, you, how old are you, do you know what I'm asking? I'm 33. 33, right. So how, how old do you think I am? No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, go on. How would you, how would you then compare you as a 33-year-old to, uh, I don't know, a 15-year-old boy? Would you say that you're able to make more decisions better than he is? No, look, in terms of the decisions of right and wrong, obviously my experience, my life experience, will allow me to make better decisions than he can. But the, the principle of knowing between right and wrong is the same. I just have more experience, right? That's the, the only thing that's separating between me and a 15 year old is experience, is a life experience. Life experience has taught me how to analyze certain decisions in, in several more ways than I would have at 15. And this is what we pass on to them. We don't, at 15, I wouldn't go to a 15 year old and teach him what is right and wrong. You get me? He already knows. I just help him in, uh, in his thought process of how to judge things. That's, a, that's the thing, but I don't need to go to a 15 year old and say, by the way, this is right and that's wrong. Don't need to do that. No one does that. Unless, of course, they have an, an impairment of some sort. And that's where the pin, and for us in Islam, if someone has a, a mental impairment that they cannot make those decisions, moral decision, the pen is lifted. Allah does not hold them to account because out of his justice. So why, why would you, you know, hold someone to account who can't make a decision for himself? You know, there's the justice. And there's the mercy of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust to any of his mankind. He's not, he doesn't command anything that's immoral. Even with, we, we, we touched briefly on jihad. Even in jihad, the enemies have rights. Yeah? So if we capture an enemy and we tie them up, we cannot harm them. Right? So if they are tied, we are not allowed to harm them. Because they're tied, they're subdued. Um, okay, 
you, oh, you're going to make a few more points, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. so I'm just, uh, you know, in terms of the, the people that we capture, in terms of